Welcome back to another Minecraft video. Today we're going to be talking about automated railroad crossings. Now it's been a long time coming for these railroad crossings and it's going to save you a ton of time when you're setting up your next railroad crossings. And I really hope that you guys haven't spent too many hours setting up complicated redstone circuitry to make the manual stuff work because now you're going to see just how easy it is to set these up. So uh, obviously right off the bat we can see that we're not in a flat world this time. I accidentally forgot to switch it from default to flat. So we're just going to have to deal with all the animals and the livestock that I'm too lazy to kill and whatnot. So it's going to be a little unusual to not be in a flat land, but here we are. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look. We got our pretty standard railroad crossing set up here. We got what we're used to here. You know, we got our grade crossing, a section of track. So when we flip on the switch, we can see that everything kicks on and performs exactly as we are used to. Now, you know what? Let's just get rid of this switch and we're gonna do something completely different to make this way easier. So the first thing I wanna bring up is this graphic. This graphic is an overview of how the crossings are gonna be set up. Now, it might look a little complicated at first, but trust me, it's gonna make a whole lot of sense once we're done. So the two main parts to this are the approach circuits on either side and the island circuit in the center. Now, what the heck are these circuits about? The island circuit is going to be what activates the railroad crossing anytime a train is within that circuit on the track. So that way, if a train were to stop within the crossing, the crossing will not shut off. And then we got the other approach circuits, which are on either side of the island circuits that will activate the crossing only when a train is moving towards it. And then if a train stops within the approach circuit, but not in the island circuit, then the crossing will deactivate after 10 seconds of no train movement at all. So now that we've talked about it a little bit, let's actually put it into action. So if you remember from the graphic, there were a B and an I. Now a B stands for a border shunt and an I stands for an island shunt. So if we go into our inventory here, we can see these two new items, border shunt and island shunt. So the first thing we're gonna set up is our island. Now remember, the island is going to be activating the crossing anytime a train is within that circuit. So we're gonna want it pretty close to the roadway. So in this case, I'm gonna set it one, two, three, four blocks from the crossing. And then I'm gonna to go to the other side and do the same thing. One, two, three, four, and place it right here. Now, just like rail stuff's signals, it's gotta be facing in the direction that, of travel for the train. You can see that there's no text on any other side aside from the direction of travel. Now we're gonna place down our border shunts on either end. Now the border shunt is going to be defining what is our approach circuits for any oncoming trains. So this is a pretty short track and we're gonna take it pretty slow through here, especially for demonstration purposes. So I'm gonna set it meh, right here. Now I'm gonna to go to the other side and I'm gonna do the same thing Let's say right here. Just like that. And that's it. Now we have our border set up and the cir and the circuitry for everything. I'm just gonna turn animal sounds right off because that's annoying. There we go. So now all we have to do is just use our crossing gate tuner and pair the shunts with the relay box. Bloop. Bloop, bloop, and bloop. All right, and you'll see every time you do that in the bottom left, just like with everything else, you're going to see that it says that you have paired the whatever shunt to the relay box. And that's it. We now have a fully automated railroad crossing. So let's actually put this thing to the test. Now I know every time I was testing with this, I love to use the hand cart because it's so easy to control and I don't have to worry about fuel or anything like that. So I'm gonna place down the hand cart. And we see that the crossing isn't active because we're not within the border shunt. And now I'm gonna slowly roll up so that way we can see the crossing activate. And I can see the red lights flashing already. And now I'm gonna stop just short of the island circuit. Gates are coming down. And here we are at a stop. Now if we count 10 seconds, the crossing should shut off because we are short of the island circuits. Sure enough, they go back up, even though the train is still within. Now I'm gonna roll the train backward, away from the crossing. 
and we'll see that the crossing will not activate because we're not moving towards the crossing at all. So if you have a train show up to a crossing, you can have them stop short of the crossing and back up and you won't have to stop traffic just because they're not moving towards it. So let's move this handcart forward again. This time we're gonna stop within the crossing bounds. And this thing takes forever to stop, so we we'll have to move slowly. Crossing is coming down. And we come to a stop right there. Put the hand car right in the middle of the crossing. And you can see, even though there's no movement, the crossing isn't gonna shut off because there's something in the middle. Let's go ahead and move this clear of the island circuit. And we'll see that the crossing will shut off as soon as we clear the island circuit. There it goes. And if we do the same in reverse, so say we go the other direction. The crossing will activate as soon as we're in the approach circuit. And then once we clear the island circuit, then it'll go back up. And there you have it. So some typical rules with how these automated crossings are gonna work is you need to figure out how fast the trains are gonna be traveling on your track. And after you figure out how fast that is gonna happen, then you need to push your border shunts back out to where the signals are gonna be down in a reasonable amount of time, however long you want them. And that's it. Those are automated railroad crossings. Super simple to set up. You can do it with multiple tracks as long as you have an island circuit for each track. And then the border shunts will just go up to the nearest island shunt. I hope you guys really enjoy this. Like I said, this has been something that has been requested since like the inception of this. And here they are. So everybody enjoy.